Hi everyone, welcome back to our channel. In today's video, we'll be introducing you to some of the most commonly used openings in Xiangqi. Hopefully, by the end of this video, you will have a greater understanding of these basic opening systems and be able to apply it to your games. The opening phase is the core of a Xiangqi game. The quality of your opening will determine the development of the whole game. Before we look into specific openings, let's learn how to recognize the opening. In Xiangqi, a game can be divided into three stages, the opening, the mid-game, and the end-game. It's pretty easy to see where the opening starts. It's the first move of the game. But it's much harder to see where it ends. There is no clear division between the opening and the mid-game due to the diversity and complexity of Xiangqi. However, generally, the opening is considered complete after 10 to 15 moves and the game transitions into the mid-game. You can tell when this transition occurs by identifying a couple main features. 1. The dominant pieces, the chariot, horse, and cannon of both sides have been developed. 2. Both sides begin to execute on their plans of attacking or defending. 3. Both players' pieces begin to interact with each other, either by creating tension and restricting the opponent's pieces' movements or by trading with them. Before talking about specific openings, here are some general principles to learn, which will form a good foundation for evaluating openings moving forward. As you become a stronger Xiangqi player, you will learn when these rules can be broken, but as a beginner to intermediate player, the following is a good guide to follow in any opening. Principle 1. Develop pieces early. In Xiangqi, players must create more room for pieces and build connections between them. Because of this, you should develop your more dominant pieces as soon as possible. As you play more, you'll find that in most openings, these core pieces are developed in the first few moves. Principle 2. Develop pieces evenly. In most cases, you shouldn't develop only one side of the board or only a single piece. Instead, you should let pieces on both left and right sides of the board participate in the battlefield. For instance, moving only your chariots will likely leave your horses and cannons in disadvantageous positions. Principle 3. Create room for your pieces and restrict space for your opponent's pieces. Your pieces are most effective when working together. Because of this, we need to create room for our pieces while restricting our opponent's space. This allows us to move our pieces to work in tandem with each other while making it more difficult for your opponent to do the same. For example, moving a soldier can create room for our horses and moving our cannon can reduce the enemy chariot's space. Some of these concepts and principles may seem vague now, but you will become more familiar with them as you play more and have more experience. With these general tips out of the way, we will discuss six main openings. There are an astronomical number of openings in Xiangqi, enough to fill a book, and even for the top grandmasters, it's impossible to remember all of them. In this video, we don't have time to introduce every opening in detail, but we'll go over the first few steps in each of the most popular openings. Hopefully, after this video, you'll be able to recognize these openings if they come up in your game, and you'll be able to react accordingly. If you're interested in more detailed dives into specific openings, please subscribe and turn notifications on. Those are coming soon. Opening 1. Central Canon The Central Canon is the most common opening in Xiangqi. This is a good one for beginners. In the Central Canon opening, red starts with C8, C5. This move threatens the central black soldier right out of the gate, so the central cannon opening is considered an aggressive opening. There are many ways to respond to this opening if you're playing black. We'll go over a couple variations here. Variation 1. Same direction cannon. The same direction cannon variation refers to the response from black of H8, H5. As we can see, the cannons in the first and second move are both from file 8 to 5, so it's called the same direction cannon variation. A common result of this response is A8C7, J8H7, A9A8, J9I9, A2C3, I9I4, D7E7, J2H3, D3E3. Now, both sides have the potential to further develop their game. The red side has successfully created enough room for the two horses to move out. The black side can then move the chariot I4F4 to the river side and produce space for the horse, G3F3 or G7F3. Alternatively, J3 
J1I1 makes room for the other chariot. Variation 2. Opposite Direction Cannon Whereas the same direction cannon variation refers to black moving the cannon from the same side as red, opposite direction cannon refers to moving the cannon H2H5 from the opposite side of red. A common result of this response is A8C7, J8H7, A9A8, J9J8, A8G8, H8, H9. If red captures the black chariot with G8, J8, black can respond with H7, J8, then A2C3, J2, H3. On the other hand, if red does not capture the black chariot with G8, G7, then black can respond with J8, H8, then C2, C4, J2, H3, D3, E3. In both scenarios, the red and black sides have many opportunities to progress their boards further. Variation 3. Screen Horse The screen horse variation has black responding with C8, C5, J8, H7, A8, C7, J9, J8, A9, A8, J2, H3. Note that this is one of the most complex and aggressive openings, especially for black. It's called screen horse because the two black horses are arranged like a screen in order to carry out defensive strategies. In response, red usually chooses either d3 e3 or d7 e7. There are many more variations past this point, which we will have to cover in future videos. Variation 4. Opposite direction horse. The opposite direction horse variation responds with C8, C5, J2, H3, A8, C7, H8, H6, A9, A8, J8, H7. It's called opposite direction horse variation because black moves the horse opposite the red cannon. After this, red often chooses between D3, E3, and D7, E7 to create room for the horse. However, red should be careful not to move A2, C3 because then black can move h6, c6 to carry out a definite capture. That's it for variations in response to the central cannon opening. Let's move on to some more openings. Opening 2, cornered cannon. The second opening we will introduce is the cornered cannon. Unlike the central cannon, which moves the red cannon to the central line of the chessboard, the cornered cannon starts with c8, c6, leaving the red cannon at the corner of the palace. Black can respond by h2, h5, g7, f7, or h8, h6. This opening is rarely used in Shang-Chi nowadays, but some grandmasters like Li Lai Qun continue to use it in competitions. Opening 3. Outreached Cannon The third opening we will introduce is the Outreach Cannon. This name refers to red's first move, c8, c4, it gets its name because compared to the central cannon opening's first move of c8, c5, the cannon here is moved one space more, so it is outreached. Black can respond with h8, h5, j8, h7, or j3, h5, and so on. For red, outreach cannon can result in a very stable structure. If black is too eager to attack, they may find it hard to break through. However, a flaw in this opening is that it brings two cannons close together, which may clog up space and restrict the movement of other pieces, so this must be carefully considered and played around. Opening 4. Preemptive Horse The preemptive horse opening starts with A8C7. It usually transposes into a screen horse or opposite direction horse led by the red side, so some of its variations are called preemptive screen horse and preemptive opposite horse. Black usually responds with G7's F7, to restrict space for red's horse. It's generally considered more aggressive than the cornered cannon and outreach cannon. Opening 5. Flying Elephant The flying elephant starts with A3, A5, or A7, A5. It's mainly a defensive opening. Black can respond with H8, H5, H2, H4, H8, H4, J2, H3, G7, F7. Opening 6. Celestial Sortie Celestial sortie refers to the soldier opening of d3 e3 or d7 e7. This creates room for the horse on c3 or c7, and is very flexible. This opening is a favorite of many veteran Shangxi players due to its complexity. 
It's not as immediately aggressive as the central cannon opening, but it's more stable. It gets its name because the soldier that is moved is likened to a celestial being guiding the development of the rest of the game. And a sortie is a sudden attack made from a defensive position, like the position of the pieces at the game start, hence celestial sortie. The typical response to celestial sortie is d3 e3, h2 d3, j3 h5, g7 f7, or j8 h7. Openings 2 through 6 are less commonly used in beginner groups. They generally lead to more complex positions that require great experience to play optimally. Because of this, it's probably best to stick to the central cannon opening if you're still a beginner. If you stumble into an opening you are unfamiliar with, try your best to stick to the principles we mentioned earlier, develop your pieces early, and create space. It's a lot, but there's no rush to memorize it all at once. Shangji.com will always be here for you to play and practice on. We hope this video was helpful. If you have any questions about the video, please leave a comment. If you like this video, please give us a like and subscribe to our channel. Make sure you sign up on Shangchi to play some games with our wonderful community, and see you in the next video.